Jack here, GBA of Music and Guitar Lessons. In this video I'm looking at how to write like Metal Legends Iron Maiden, focusing on the first three or four albums for an early days sort of vibe. I've been thinking about doing a video like this for quite a while, maybe looking at a genre rather than a band, although I had kind of thought about doing news or like hair metal or something like that. Uh, this one in particular was a request, so uh, leave me some comments if you want to see more of this sort of thing or if you've got any bands or styles to suggest. Obviously you're getting quite a condensed version of how I wrote and refined these, I wouldn't expect the riffs to flow quite that quickly, at least to begin with. I've written a song specifically for this, so it'll be a card at the top right if you want to check that out. I'll go through it riff by riff talking about how I wrote it and what ideas you can use to get that kind of maiden hard rock sound. I'm focusing on the guitar parts and structure, I've done a few other Maiden videos as well so I'll link to those in the comments, um, anyway more than enough talking, let's go on with the lesson. Typically Iron Maiden will play an E minor, so that seems as good a key as any. The guitars tend to rely quite heavily on power chords so let's start with an E5. Something Steve Harris does a lot, particularly on the early albums, this is D5 to E5. So let's say two bars of E, one of D, and then another of E. Prowler is a good example of that exact progression. The Maiden will sometimes slide it into the uh, E from the D, something like Wrathchild, uh, running free as well. So let's do that, but just for the first bar. Cool, well that's taken shape, but it's not too interesting at the moment. I think most of the song will be in 4-4, but Maiden do write in a few different time signatures. I don't want to go overboard here, but a nice little 6-8 riff would probably sit in quite well. A 6-8 is this sort of feel. Quest for Fire or Phantom of the Opera. Which you could argue is triplets, that those kind of spring to mind as examples. So when writing in the style of, it's sometimes a good idea to take a few songs or riffs from songs and look for common elements and try to mix them. So to that end, this riff will pretty much be moulded around Phantom of the Opera's verse and Running Free's bridge. If we add a bit more rhythm, I really like this minor third thing that happens in front of the opera. So let's add something like that, maybe with some light palm muting. Yeah. Now, running free is those cool little high lead parts. Uh. So let's see if I can do something along those lines. Uh. Like that one. Uh, so bonus trick number one, this scale shape here. Uh, that's really good for getting a Maiden vibe. Some songs that use that shape would be the Trooper and Running Free, but cool, let's repeat that idea for the next bar, and we could play it again over the D, uh, but that's a bit more like a latter maiden than the early days, uh, moving the twiddly bit, and I'm, I'm a professional musician and I'm quite sure twiddly bit is the, indeed the technical term for these sorts of things, uh, but moving that down with the chord might be an idea. So bonus trick number two, you have this scale shape. It's the same scale as before, but the finger will produce slightly different riffs. Uh, Phantom of the Opera's intro or Hallowed Be Thy Name. Give that another go. There we go, uh, for points of reference. On a side note, I'm using hammers on these licks to make life a lot easier. Now, this might sound really obvious, but it can make all the difference between a lick or riff flowing and being a total jagged nightmare to play. The final bar, a typical maiden move, is something similar to the first twiddle, but maybe leaving notes out so it doesn't feel quite as resolved or changing it in some way, meaning that the start of the bar has more impact on the repeat. So I'll go for this. And if I put that all together. At 
this point I'm starting to think about the other instruments. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, so maybe just another guitar for now. I could double it all, but I, I like the idea of playing power chords over those single notes and letting it ring. And I'm strumming the rhythm this time rather than palm muting it at that little... Uh, um, I'm also going to play a fourth for the very first chord, so rather than take a power chord like that, I'm going to play it here. Uh, this happens in Charlotte the Harlot and it's very subtle but can help fill out the sound just a little bit more. I tend to do these as hammers after that because it's a little bit easier under my fingers. Uh, cool, so running free has those lead parts harmonised, so let's look at doing that. Th this first note, uh, what was it? This one here. This first note I'm going to play in thirds, so if you remember our scale shape from before, that will help out here. So I'm not too keen to dive into the music theory here, but basically if you play a note, uh, that one, skip the note in the scale, so we'll miss out this one, and then play the next note, you'll get some sort of third, which will fit into key. So our twiddle was this. If we find the thirds for those first two notes, we have this one here, and then this note was here, so we go that note, miss one, take this one. So we have, that's our first two notes. Now, my music theory being is twitching, and I know that this note here, which ended up being a fourth harmony, will actually sound better over the E minor chord, so I'm going to use that instead of the fourth. This will sound a bit more like hard rock, which is great because that's the vibe we're going for. It's less kill switch engage and more thin Lizzy. Now, you could harmonize the lower notes. That would be. Oops. But this would give a much more modern sound rather than the early days one that I'm aiming for. Over the D, I'm not really feeling this harmony. And that's actually because it's not a harmony anymore, I'm just doubling what the guitar one's doing. But up the octave. So what I want to do is take some notes, and I'll, I'll try playing some below. So we've got this as guitar one. So I'm going to try this in guitar two. And together it sounds like... Which is quite cool, but I want the harmony to be higher, I want it to be a higher guitar part. So why don't I take these notes, and then just move them up the octave. So together it would sound like... Now what I'm doing here is harmonising this in sixths. Uh, essentially they're like inverted thirds, so they do have a pretty similar sound in terms of the overall aesthetic. The last one is a fifth, that one, which just has a bit more of a kind of stable sound than if I did another sixth, which would sound like this. It's still nice, but not what I'm going for. So I think I'm quite happy with that, so let's hear it. So uh, with harmonies, if you have some recording software or a looper, it can, it can come in really handy for working them out. You can obviously just play the notes together like I did there, and that's exactly what I used to do years ago when I was teaching myself all this stuff. Anyway, for context, here's those parts together. Now I think that section we've just done feels more like a bridge than anything else, so now I'm going to look at doing a verse. I'll base it on Prowler and Innocent in Exile, maybe hints of Twilight Zone and Running Free or perhaps Drifter. I'm going to use a stock uh, blues riff shape, this one here, to come up with something in that. So while Maiden are renowned for their gallops, it's not really that frequent in the first three albums, so I'm not going to put a gallop part in this song, and I know, shock horror, I'm not going to put one in the guitars anyway. What is a huge factor, however, is the triplet feel. Now, you know that sort of uh, swing, bluesy, rock bounds that the drummer Clive Burr does so very well? I'm going to put that in. I want to keep my DTE start as well, for a bit of continuity between the riffs. Uh, but this will be a single note line rather than chords. So it's going to go like this. Now if I repeat that, it's going to sound a bit too blues rocky. I want it to sound a bit more hard rock. So I'm going to put in a little fill here, which I'm going to refer to as the hook. Then I'll go back to the groove. Fourth time round, I'm going to go C5 to D5. 
we have bonus tricks three and four here. The first one is a chord progression, uh, E minor, E minor, E minor, C, D. It's the old uh, six, four, five, which is a maiden trademark. And also this rhythm. Will really help get that early days sort of vibe. I'm pretty sure this could be made into a decent intro as well, but only if I go the route of Prowler or Transylvania, where the rhythm parts are going to kind of stab at the beats underneath. I can't resist adding a harmony to this hook. So using those uh, maiden shapes we went over before, I'll skip a note and add a note on this. So it would just become... And since I've strayed into the idea of arrangement, let's start thinking about the second guitar a little bit. I'll do that uh, stab on D5 to E5, like I said. Then harmonize the hook. And I'm going to let the C5 ring out. And then the D5 ring out as well. But halfway through that bar, I'm going to do a triplet rhythm. So I'm going to go. Uh, so this is, means the guitars will not be quite in sync. It's a bit more rough around the edges, rock and roll, and the slight differences in rhythm like this in the first album really help make it sound a kind of bigger stereo sound. And it's less tight or punchy, but it generally kind of gives more energy. Cool, now I want the full band to kick in after that second guitar, like with an actual beat. So the guitar is going to chug along with it. That kind of thing. And where I did those triplets on the second guitar before, I'm just going to double up the rhythm on the C and D that the other guitar is doing. And have all the instruments going to accent those for a bit more punch. So here's that first part. And now here, this is what Guitar 2 will be doing. both those parts together for a bit more context. This hook that I've come up with, I, I really like that, so I think I'm going to feature it a bit more. What I think I'll do is put up the octave, change the rhythm so it's a bit less busy, and then put in some bends so it's a bit more melodic. Be something like this. And the harmony, I'm going to keep this all thirds this time. And those two together. So I'd said that could be a verse, but in hindsight it feels a little bit too busy to be a verse now. I do however like the general groove, so let's see if I can make a variation on it. I want the verse to be a bit darker though. I'm going to take that first bit of riff, the kind of... and just have both guitars play it, keep more eighth notes going uh, for more of a pulse, maybe add some light palm muting for a bit extra chug. I'm going to repeat that again. Then I'm going to move it down a tone. So this will actually move it out of key. Uh, the aforementioned uh, Innocent and in Exile or the Bridge and Wrathchild are good examples of a riff being moved and going out of key. I suspect this might come from the 12 Blues uh, bar kind of rock songs <laughs> the Maiden Boys would have grown up on, or maybe some of Steve Harris's favourite prog bands. Anyway, after that I'm going to move it a bit down again, and this will act as a bridge between the two parts, so the transition back to this isn't quite as uh, out of the blue. I'm going to go. And then let's go with a C to a D again, right? 
except this time I want to change the rhythm a little bit for more variation. I'm going to go. So that is bonus trick number five. You've got this rhythm here. It's a triplet. And that again, that's a kind of vintage maiden one. So that whole riff will be like this. And let's hear that in the song. What I want here is a dark but also quite punchy chorus. Innocent in Exile meets The Prisoner, maybe some hints of Eyes of March or Revelations. I'm going to drop the swing shuffle vibe for the guitars just so it feels a bit heavier as well. Let's start on E5. Uh, both guitars will do the same thing here to make it have more impact. I'm going to go from E to D again. But I want to vary it a bit, so let's go to B5 after this. So the rhythm uh, under the solos in the Trooper does this. Goes to C after that. Which I think I'll do here, but I want this last bar to be a uh, fill. So I'm going to do E for a bar, D for a bar, B for a bar. And then I want to add in a little bit kind of syncopation, something off the beat that maybe all the band will kind of accent. C, G, A seems like it'd be a safe bet. Another one that might work would be a G, F sharp, G. And I might put a little bit of light palm muting on this, or maybe just on one guitar. So I'll switch between those. Now, you might have noticed that this F sharp here isn't actually in the key of E minor, but you can get away with playing it in a kind of metal maiden context. It just adds a bit of heavy crunch. Something like Rothschild. That'd be a good example of that. Uh, subsequently, bonus trick number six there, uh, playing an F sharp when you're in the key of E minor. Ideally going a G to F sharp to E. Now, I feel like the bridge we made at the start would work quite well after this, so I'll have a kind of final fourth time around repeat where it just goes from the F sharp to the G, because this will let me do that uh, D5 to E5 slide on the last eighth note of the bar, so I can actually get to the bridge without cutting off notes. Uh, at this point, I'm going to mention that it's worth having a rough idea of the structure or general dynamics when you're writing a song, and what it'll sound like might change, but having a rough idea of what the song could go like is always quite beneficial. So I'll play that guitar part now, and I'll just go straight to what it sounds like in the track. I don't want to go over the top with this, but tempo shifts are a big part of the Maiden brand of metal, so I want to put in a section with a different tempo. This will be bridge 2, and I think solos and a harmony line will probably go in here as well. Maybe not, but that's how my rough idea of the structure says it should work. So I've put off going to this low E5, and that's been intentional so that when it does happen it's more impactful. I suppose that's bonus trick number seven, is to be thinking about dynamics and what sort of part you're writing and being open to playing about with what sort of vibe it should have. The vibe I wanted here was Hallowed Be Thy Name, Children of the Damned, Remember Tomorrow's Chorus kind of thing, um, an E5, C5, D5, then E5 again but up the octave and I'm going to do a fill here, uh, kind of like Hallowed Be Thy Name. <laughs> E5, B5, uh, whoop, E5, B5, C5, that's a tongue twister. 
uh, and then a little descending line. Now on that fill I'm going to have the guitars do slightly different rhythms again for more of that stereo sound. It's subtle so it shouldn't really take away from the main impact. The power chords uh, with the octave in for guitar one, so those three notes. Except for the last fill which I'm just going to play, it's those two notes. Guitar two, I'm just going to have the root in the fifth. Uh, for most of the chords, so I'm going to play the D as an open chord, and I might leave in the A string just for a bit more beef. And these things just give you a slightly different sound, so if you're playing live or recording, it occupies a slightly different bit of the audio spectrum, and helps make things generally sound like a little bit bigger. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. Uh, and then guitar two, what I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to build up over this. So guitar two is going to start doing octaves, which is bonus trick number seven. Uh, you can do these by feel most of the time, just by listening to the notes that work well with the chord from guitar one. I'm just going to double the first chord and play an E octave. After this, I'm going to go up to G, which is the fifth of C, because that's our chord underneath. And then I'm going to go up to A, which is the fifth of D. So it works with the chords underneath. Now you could try doing these in thirds, so what would we have? We would then have a G, an E, and an F sharp, uh, which will it will work, but it'll sound a bit less heavy, it'll sound a bit more melodic. And again, the fill... Pretty much just doubling that, so there's a bit more punch on that particular line. Like I said, I feel a solo would work well in this bit, and following said solo, I'd like to do a simple harmony solo. So I, I also can't resist the gallop here, so I'm going to stick one of them in for sure, in the bass at least. So for Maiden Harmonies 101, use mainly thirds, have a simple motif or rhythmic idea that repeats, maybe changing it a tiny bit in the last bar or every fourth bar. That's pretty much what we've done so far, is there's a, a fill in every fourth bar. Have some little hammer-ons and pull-offs for little speedy bits, and maybe some nice bending. The best advice I can really give here without going down a music theory rabbit hole is to pick a note from the chord you're playing over and just start on it. So to recap the progression we've got an E minor, C, D, and the fill starting on an E minor. So what I'm going to do with guitar 1 is uh, start off on an E, which makes sense over the E5, it's the root. I'm going to be playing a G over the C, G being the 5th of C. And then I'm going to play an F sharp over the D, which is D's major third. Uh, for an in the style of uh, Iron Maiden, playing over the chords doesn't have to be too strict like this. A, a bit of crunch will sound fine. So first time round, I'm going to be playing this. And the harmony will be this. On the next time round of this harmony, guitar 1 starts on the G, the 3rd of E minor, the harmony starts on B, it's the 5th, uh, the next bar, I've gone rogue, <laughs> I've got the lower part starting on a B, and the harmony part starting on a D, so this gives a sort of a C major 7 add 9 sort of sound. If you listen to it, it doesn't sound that jazzy, it's just when you analyse it this comes down, so this is why I'm saying don't be too concerned about the theory, just kind of go with your ear. I'm just explaining it like this, so I've got kind of another mode uh, of, uh, of explanation, I suppose, of kind of conveying the information. So I would really use your ears for this sorts of things, because if you rely too heavily on your theory brain, it can become quite stale fairly quickly. Having said that, you still want your ear developed, so you can hear if something sounds, uh, you know, traditionally good in the musical sense, the traditional music sense. Otherwise, you run the risk of creating a sort of uh, unintentional audio mess. So the next bar, I've been a bit more cautious. I'm starting on an A, uh, the fifth of D, and I'm doing an F sharp in the second guitar part, an F sharp being the third of D major. You might notice that bar sounds a bit different from the others. Well, that's because I've gone for a sixth harmony again. Simply because I liked how it sounded when compared to the thirds. The final bar, I've really just quoted Hallowed Be Thy Name with a cheeky bit of the harmonic minor. Uh, for seldom used bonus trick number 8, consider using the harmonic minor from time to time in your uh, Maiden style harmonies. 
So overall the idea of the solo is to build up, mainly going up in pitch, kind of ascending, and having a higher harmony on the repeat, so when it comes round again it goes up in pitch again, and then that final line just to kind of bring it back down. Right, only two parts left. Now, these came out of necessity for more flowing structure, meaning less awkward changes between sections, or making them more jarring so as the static, that kind of awkward change, is intentional. I could have not put in the, the swung shuffle part, or done it all swung, but I really wanted to cover both aspects, so sort of sacrificing the songwriting for the sake of the lesson, which probably makes sense. Firstly, I took the hook part and played it straight. <laughs> and also harmonised it. The final idea here is a Phantom of the Opera Transylvania type harmony lead line. Guitar 1 does this for two bars. Guitar 2 does the same line for the first bar but an octave lower, then it moves up a third while Guitar 1 stays on that same one. Guitar 2 then moves up to this part, which is what Guitar 1 used to do, and that's because in the third bar I've moved Guitar 1 up to here. Then I have a C major arpeggio harmonised in thirds, I followed by a B minor one also harmonised in thirds. So guitar one would do this. Whereas guitar two, we have... Now just as a slight side note, I could have changed this here, and I did toy with it, but I preferred what I came up with there. But I could have had guitar one going C, to D, and guitar 2 doing this, uh, harmonising that in thirds, and then moving up to here for the D. I just preferred the first one ever so slightly. So here is a uh, guitar 1. And guitar two. Okay, so that's enough parts to be getting on with, so let's talk a little bit about the structure. Having a, a DAW a recording software is really a lot of help here. You can record a rough version of the parts to a click and then just kind of move them about and see what works. It, the tempo and time signature changes can still be a bit of a pain in terms of mapping out the tempo track. I would recommend thinking about it as you write each riff. Uh, try not to get too set on an idea of, oh this is a verse and this is a chorus, until you've tried out a few variations. Admittedly, this song won't flow that well because I've sandwiched a few different styles of Maiden together and I was trying to keep it as short as I could because Maiden are quite fond of repetition, uh, playing something for 16 bars instead of 4 or 8. So keep that in mind as well as bonus tip number 9, uh, but anyway, let's see what we can do. So Maiden have some really interesting song structures, but a lot of them will conform to the intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, solo, chorus, which might be a double chorus and perhaps an outro. So I'll use that as a basic model and adapt it as necessary. The intro. So after the kind of the, the stabs when the band kicks in, I was just going to leave it as the hook. But a Dave Murray style solo with a whole whack delay felt too good to leave out. 
I've done a How to Sound Like Dave Murray lesson before, it's a card up there if you want to check that out. And bonus tip number 10, more frequent and shorter solos that sound like the early days. So a song like Rat Child is a great example of this. Uh, into the verse, at this point I'll say if I had put vocals into this tune it would likely change the entire structure again. If there were vocals, the return to the hook here would be a bit of a reprieve anyway. I've got quite typical of Maiden in an uh, elongated calm response between the vocals and guitar. So back to the verse and then it's time for a chorus. So this is quite a delayed chorus, it's about a minute before it actually kicks in, which is something to consider if you want to do something in a Maiden style. Then I'm back into the hook, and I'm playing it straight this time, uh, the unswung version. Now I did this because it really helped smooth the transitions from straight to swung. I also put in another uh, Dave Murray style solo here uh, when it returns to the swing verse, and this was to help smooth over that transition. There's a short verse and then we're into the chorus, so there's not nearly as much waiting about for this one. Again, having vocals would probably change this, but this is something to try nonetheless. Um, verse 2 could either be shorter or longer than the first verse. Mix it up and see. At this point it seemed like a good idea to go for the first bridge. This is the 6-8 one, so this is the very first riff that we looked at. I, I didn't want to dive straight into the bridge's main riff, I wanted to build it up. So I started with just these kind of uh, ringing out power chords. Now, it also sounded a little bit similar to our verse in that they both go D5 to E5. And that move helped a bit more continuity, which is a good thing considering we've got a time signature shift here. Uh, on the repeat, I started doing the lead line in guitar one, and guitar two just uh, harmonizes the lead line on every fourth repeat just to make that one pop out a little bit more. Uh, next, I've got them both playing the lead line. So th this is a good example of where Maiden would probably take their time, They'd probably stretch us out a bit longer. So bonus trick uh, number 11, take a part and see how simple you can make it, but make sure it's still effective or sounds good or interesting, it works in the context of the song. Then consider building it up from that point, and don't be afraid to take your time if it's feeling like it's a good build up. Coming out of the bridge here was a little bit tricky, so this time instead of trying to smooth over what is an admittedly bit of a dodgy transition, I just exaggerated it by putting in that harmony line, that kind of harmonised thing that builds up. I then did a solo in the style of Adrian Smith to help make the verse change have a bit more impact. And then we have the hoop again. I do apologise if it gets stuck in your head, it, it definitely did mine. Uh, this time with a variation at the end, uh, so that full kind of transitions into bridge 2. I've ripped off, quite shamelessly, uh, Dave Murray's How Would Be The Name solo. Uh, I've also got quick tricks for Dave Murray's uh, Legato, so pop a lesson up there if that interests you. Obviously, uh, Maiden would probably take a longer solo here, but I was trying to keep it a bit short and snappier, so it's just a few bars. I also uh, doubled the speed and the drums for a bit more energy here, and then went back to the regular beat for the, the Adrian Smith style solo. Changing the drums is a great way to add dynamics and a bit more interest to a song. Uh, two minutes to midnight springs to mind, which to be fair is later in their career than this was video was aiming for, but I think it's a really worthwhile final bonus trick to point out. Harmony's time building to an epic finish. So the last bar slows down gradually so that that tempo shift is a bit smoother. And the variation on the chorus here as well, with the drums and the bass just accenting these beats for the first half anyway. I toyed with having all the choruses like this, but felt it was more impactful just to have this one like that alone. A hook for the outro uh, with that Iron Maiden drum beat, the drum beat from the song, Iron Maiden, the da 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 thing. I also layered in guitars trend picking the hook line here, they're pretty low in the mix but it does help add a little bit more excitement to the, what is essentially the final flourish. Okay, so I've packed quite a lot into that one. The key points to take away, E minor, power chords, and some progressions to try would be a 6-4-5, 6 4 5, six, three, four, five a 6-6-5-6, six, 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 and a 4-5-6-6. Six, six. Uh, variations around those as well. So in, in non-musical speak, we'd have a E minor C D, we'd have an E minor B C D. E minor, E minor, D, E minor, C, D, E minor, E minor. They're all uh, groups of four there, all four bar progressions. Uh, different time signatures and tempo changes, those are other things to consider doing. A shuffle or that kind of bouncy feel, uh, and solos as well. Take uh, shorter solos and little lead fills and stuff like that too. Take a riff and move it down a tone, move it about a bit, see, you know, transpose it and see if you can get it sounding kind of heavy but not too bluesy or psychedelic. Although the first albums are a bit more space rocky, so you could probably get away with that. Got hooks and harmonies, and not just thirds, mainly thirds, but not just thirds, try some different ones as well. Adding in the likes of fourths, fifths, and sixths, like we've seen throughout this lesson. Doubling the guitar parts, so just playing them verbatim, and also having them slightly different for that stereo effect. Uh, when I say stereo effect, I mean you've got a guitar that's panned on the right here doing one thing, guitar on the left doing something slightly different. 
Uh, so instead of it being like a, a wall of the same sound coming at you, it gives this, this, this stereo effect where they're slightly different. Simple but also very powerful rhythms so where the whole band plays the same thing, just like we did on that last chorus, that like da 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 da, that thing. Um, also, generally try to keep the song flowing, but don't be afraid to throw in a curveball either, because Maiden do do that from time to time. They just throw something out of the blue at your ear, wah, knocks you back, and it does work every so often, it sounds good. Cool, so as always, hopefully that's been useful for you guys. Uh, leave me suggestions if you've got any ideas, check out some other videos I've done, and please do consider to uh, subscribe, like, share, and enable notifications with that little bell on the side if you feel so inclined. Cheers guys.